My good friend, uh, Dr. James Mwangi, whom I have known and admired for many years, uh, Executive Chairman of uh, Equity Bank Foundation, uh, Professor Paul Wainaina, my colleague whom I left uh, at Catholic University earlier, I think he's on his way here, who is the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Kenyatta University. Uh, wings to Fly Scholars, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. First of all, one thing is uh, sure, that I don't qualify to stand here to address you. But if you think I should uh, be the one to try, then I will speak to you as candidly as I've always done. And uh, the topic that I'm going to talk to you about is integrity. And perhaps using myself as, as an example, I have lived my life. You have your life to live. So I'm more worried about when I go to be with the Lord, what is it that you youngsters will remember me about? And I ask myself, would I like to be remembered as Magoha, Professor Magoha, who had several trucks of gold in his house? Or would I want to be remembered for having done something that touched the less fortunate people? And we start our journey from there. When you are talking about integrity, first of all, <laughs> you must start by respecting your body, your own body, the naked body, not the clothed one. Are we together? You respect it, you don't abuse it, you bring it up the way God has made you to bring it up. And that is the first challenge because you are millennial children, all of you. So if you don't respect your body, there is no way you are going to respect any other person's body. You don't inject your body with strange things, you don't uh, put things in your body that are, are not important. The body is, is we, call, we say it is a temple, as a surgeon, we say the body is a, it's like a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at uh, what I do for a living, until I was appointed here, you find that uh, when you are dealing with a naked body, everybody is the same, especially after you have cut the skin. Whether you are a Muzungu, who has about 300 billion in the bank, or some beggar on the street who just eats once every three days, or a normal person, the best life is that one where you struggle. Today you don't have money for milk, you are looking for it, it comes, then you carry the money for milk to your children. All those people are the same before God. And I think perhaps why Dr. Mwangi asked me to come here is to come and tell you that uh, in order to succeed in this life, you must first of all respect yourself. Because if you respect yourself, then you don't have to copycat anybody. You get the point? You have a shoe which has a hole under it, but that shoe belongs to Magoha, son of Magoha, and it is my shoe, so you can go to hell. You don't have to worry about somebody who has 10 pairs. That guy with 10 pairs should copy you to see that you are so comfortable. So I come to my second point. As children and Kenyans, we must learn to be satisfied with what we have. Are we together? We are not the same, even my fingers are not the same. So if God has given you a beautiful body and everybody is very beautiful, forget about what other people say. You have to be satisfied with, with it 
and what you have. Because I remember one day in my life as an asthmatic, my mother had five cents. And that five cents was supposed to go to buy tea in the village so that I can take hot fluid in my chest, that I can breathe properly. And the five cents got lost. But you see where I am now. So you are not supposed to be intimidated by what we call splendid outside glamour. Are we together? Don't be carried away with splendid outside glamour. So you respect yourself and you get satisfied with what you want. It takes me to my third point. In my other life, which some of you know, because if this is from one, two, and three. Ah, you are all my children, then. Yeah, because the class that is left is not mine. Uh, Dr. Mwangi, these are all my children. By that I mean, I was appointed to, to work at NEC. Why, I don't know. Do you get the point? <laughs> so I was telling His Excellency, but sir, I'm a university professor. I've not dealt with children in primary and secondary schools. But he said, no, you go there. And you know when the commander-in-chief says go, you go. Said, yeah. After a few days, I, I realized why I had to go down there. And I think some of you must know, because you must have known from the primary school section what used to happen. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time there. But I want to tell you that in the first year of uh, 2016, he said I went to Stare Boys Center. A Starehian does not trust anybody except God, even your best friend. So when your best friend says I have completed the homework, you go and do what? You go back and check. Do you understand me? We have already done this and it is complete, say thank you very much. Go and check. So in my checking, when I was told uh, these are the results, I said, okay, bring for me the mathematics paper. And I did a random check. And three, about 333,000 had zero, like zero. Which means, and the children are innocent. The children are what? They are innocent, they are like slits. It is where you tell them to go, they will go. If you tell them to cheat in the exam, that's what they will do. If you don't teach them, they will not learn. So having seen 50% of the results with zero, it then meant that there was no teaching. Because God is very kind, eh? God is very kind because if he did not distribute intelligence equally, to everybody, then I wouldn't be where I am now. And integrity is so important because right now our challenge is that you are lucky you are here. In your villages, there are children who are, and some of them even more intelligent than you. Do, do you understand? For example, my cook or my cleaner should be, could be having a, a more intelligent child than that means that's the way God was very fair. He did it at random. And my job is to ensure that I pick those children from the gutter and make sure their head shows. They were not showing before as well because those who had money like me and the others now were propping hours to go to universities and they fall out. Uh, are we together? And as I continue, Every decision you make in your life, if you are stupid and a man tells you the usual stories that he can't sleep when he's thinking about you, then you must be extremely stupid <laughs> to consider opening. I'm telling you, these are things which you, you should take control of your body. I'm talking to the females now. It was very painful 
when you are finding children of 12, 13, 14, 15 pregnant, where, where did that thing even come from? Are we together? It means you are not in control of your body. When the body tells you, I want this, you tell him to shut up and keep quiet. So bad. I'm telling you, and it will happen. And for the boys too, if you feel like you are the bull of uh, Auckland in, in a China shop, you must say, no, this is not the time. But even if you see the most beautiful girl in, from heaven, say, Mungu hapo umefanya kasi lakini, bado. That is what I mean by taking control of yourself and respecting yourself. Or not, because when somebody tells you, oh me, I don't sleep now, so you actually believe the idiot does not sleep. He sleeps very well. Are we together? So going back to the issues of integrity. If one has not conquered him or herself, then there is no way you are going to apply that integrity to somebody else. And I've already told you, uh, if I, maybe I'll have a grandchild soon, I don't know, but if I do, and that grandchild is a C material, I will love that grandchild with as much love as is possible. Not try to make him or her an A material. And I want to use my own example again. Well, as I go to the theaters to operate, if the people who are helping me to operate there, they are equally as important. Everybody is important. The problem you people have is that everybody wants to go to university. And everybody wants to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. Foul. It doesn't make sense. Be proud. For example, if, if I was a toilet cleaner, do you get the point? And I've done it before. There are parents who don't even allow their children to clean toilets. I'm not going to brand them. You can brand them yourself. You get the point. If you're a toilet cleaner and you, are be, you have been given a task to do like toilet cleaning or making tea or making your bed, why don't you make it so well that the person who is going to look at it will say, no, I think this is one of the, clean, the best clean toilets I've seen in life and also do it and save some time for you. Self-integrity and self-control also means that you don't become addicted. And addiction, which will, will be applicable to you all, is to the cell phone. If you, are a, if you have been addicted to the cell phone, start de-addicting yourself from it. You find that even simple tasks which you can do, you go where? You look for the cell phone. Because you have told your brain to go to sleep. A normal person like myself, the brain could be working at about 5%. If I push very hard, maybe 5.5%. Why don't you allow yours to work at that level? Do you get the point? You get somebody, now those are the guys, children of big guys. They are smoking something. And then they tell you, you try, you win the pure kabisa. So you also now join. Why don't they join you in what you are doing yourself? That is the character I want you to live with from here. But I want to tell you a story again. I'm trying to, to come down to your level. Starry Boys Center, year undisclosed. I used to be a band player. I joined a teenage band and we recorded a record. I was paid 30 bob. You, you get the point? Went and bought some jeans and kofia, camera, hide, and things like that. But then, because of that music, I was attracted to Starry Boy Center. 
And that was my saving grace because then I would sneak out of school, more or less like some of you behave now, borrow a comorera from a rich student. Because for me, I used to come from Jericho on foot through my jango. Sometimes you carry your shoes. When you reach Tare, you polish them. So to sit on a comorera and you go to town, it's like you are in heaven. Do you get the point? I was not practicing what I'm telling you to do. If I did, I would have been so proud to just be who I am. So I was caught in that town, and uh, the rest is history, because that bicycle was smashed, and I got six of the best on the backside. But then when I was now contained into a classroom, I realized I was very intelligent, because I went to the top of the class. Do you get the point? So do not have low self-esteem at any time. God cannot have been wrong to have taken time to create you. God could not have been wrong to have taken time to create you the way he created you. as a purpose for your lives. So if somebody tells you, oh, let's go and have a shot of whiskey, tell him, no, you go, watch a mimi niendeku, kunya soda pandei, and be very proud. They can say, The person, I was borrowing his bicycle, I now pay his house rent. Are we together? So this is the most important time in your life, this time that we are talking to you about. I want to talk a little bit about how you are going through examinations in school. First of all, we have all agreed that the syllabus you have, the curriculum you have, is defective. It is defective because it is meant to get people going to the top. And the, all the others are regarded as failures. So we are addressing that. But that notwithstanding, who has said that if you don't get, for example, a C plus, then you are a failure? In fact, if you think that because you have a C, you have failed, then you are stupid. You are not stupid because you have a C. You are very stupid because you think you have failed. Do you get the point? You haven't failed anything. That was an exam meant to only see one aspect of you. And I will use my life again to show you. Uh, somebody I know does some business at home of animals. Eh? And there was somebody who, who dropped out of school even before Standard 7. When you see what that person is doing with the farm animals, you will wonder and think this person was trained in animal husbandry. So it is important to go where your heart is. And if the parents are listening, parents should also stop telling children, oh, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be an engineer. I want you to be a lawyer. In my other life as a vice chancellor of the University of Nairobi, I have seen people who have done medicine and engineering and given back the certificate to the, to the parents. So now, Daddy, let me now do mine. This was for you. So you have pilots who are doctors. This is real life. I don't know whether your parents have time for you. Forget about giving you money, because I know they give you money. Those who are parents, do they have time for you? Like sitting down and just chatting, not giving you money. Or telling you, giving you a vitamin which we say is called vitamin no, it is not going to happen, period. Who, how many of you have parents here? Are they, do they have time for you? The way they should? Okay, I'm disappointed because I thought you'd be supporting me. Because what I, when I was growing up, <laughs> how, how can you see thousands of primary school children 
who are pregnant? Who even brought that idea into their heads? If the parents, you know, it is true, if the parents were talking to them, eh, and also talking to the boys, that would not have happened. Because for us, again, we used to fight at your age. I was 12 or 13 when I was a, a, a teenage gang leader, kind of. Eh? And you, we used to fight that somebody has looked at your girlfriend. But there was nothing. You just liked seeing the girl. And you were very happy. Now, this, this stage of even opening legs and even doing other things, he may talk about me. Because nobody is saying you should not be friendly. But for heaven's sake, take control of your body. Are we together? I want to empower you by saying that uh, in our constitution, you now have a chapter on integrity. And I don't know how to put this so that you can remember it. When I was young, and there was 10 shillings, that time it was a note in the church. I was the last to leave the church. So I carried the 10 shillings to my mother. She was outside the door. And I was taken back to the church. We looked for the father, and we gave the money to the father, and he announced and he found the owner. Some of you here who are Catholics, for example, who serve mass, do you know that they put their hands in the till? Are you, are you listening to me? Which means you are not even stealing from me, you are stealing from God himself direct. So what you must grow up knowing is that every decision you make, every choice you make now as you grow up, has a consequence. If you want to enjoy now, to go and drink with the rich ones, to go and do all sorts of things, then five, six years from now, you are a matatu conductor. It is your own choice. You have the power to do so. Have an organized life. And I want to talk about time. Time, young ladies and gentlemen, is one of those things God was very fair about because he gave time to us equally. Are we together? Uh, unfortunately, at midnight, what has expired, you can't get. So don't be stupid to think you can save time. It is moving. So even now, I've been briefed by Mwangi, and I know where you are coming from. But in order to give maximum impact on your life, be an organized person and use your time wisely. For example, if you decided to study alone, and after two hours you are reading and you are, you are absorbing 10%, what is the best use of you? What, how would you best use your time next? You have another four hours. Do you keep on reading, thinking that you are absorbing anything? Or do you go and do some exercise? Or do something different? So the judicious use of your time will actually determine what happens to you as you go further. I want to debunk the myth of, of an A student in every population. And I've taught medicine for 41 years, so I, can, I think I have some qualification to say so. In every population, the straight A student group is between 5 to 10%. Are you, that's the way God has created it. And you don't need an A to do anything. What you need to do is to understand the subject so that you can carry it on from where you have found it. So there's no reason 
anybody, even if the person is your father or mother, even though you must obey them, tell them there, I am sorry, I am not going to, to follow you. Because the, the mark that you need is 55%, 50 plus 1. It means you understand the subject. Again, I will give you a practical example. In the exam that was taken uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, a senior person like me, first of all, this year's exam is, is done. It is simple. Just go through the syllabus. Don't listen to anybody telling you he has said anything. You will see it on the day of the... I'm telling you, even the biology one is simple. Uh, apply what you are reading. Sendio? Yeah, don't read like, and understand the topics as you are going on. It's done, and it is simple. So in this situation, we gave general science paper earlier, and the crooks who had taken money picked that paper and formed the biology paper. And as they did so, one of the senior people was frantically looking for the daughter in one school, which I will not name because uh, we were able to deal with it. We did not allow that to happen. I panicked because I saw the diagram and I said, ah, this diagram, when I was proofreading, I saw it. So I panicked. And even me, I didn't have the papers and I couldn't open. So I had to call the secure people who could look at the exam, because the way we are doing it, at, even me, I can't go and open until the time. But before we did that, there was a lot of hula baloo. So we decided, when we were told it was not the exam, it was the one of the previous year, or of the previous day, we said we should not involve the child. Who can guess how the child performed? We didn't involve the child at all. The child got a B plus in the biology that very many people failed. Suppose the father had reached her with the, with the other exam, what do you think should, should have happened? That's why I was telling you, uh, obey your parents, but if, if they followed the wrong route, you are the ones who tell them, no, this is not the right route. So the girl is doing some nice course now, but of course the officer was, was what? What do you think happened to him? I will not tell you, you can use your intelligence to, to gauge. So I'm just saying that uh, the exams that you have now, you are not supposed to score 100%. Who has told you you have to score 100%? <laughs> yeah? You are never supposed to score 100%. Even 80% even is too much. So if you give us between 60 and 70 percent, you are home and dry. That's it. So when you find a question that you don't understand, watch an eye. You think about the, the questions that you understand, because nobody expects you to. Because when I took over, there was schools that had 300 children and they had 300 A's. That's where it had reached. Eh? But since you are all the reformed group, you passed because you passed. That one I can guarantee. We have one more class. No, there's one class that is still, you have form three and four. Form three is mine, form four is Nirewa Tungine. But, but still, still, if you have followed what I've told you, nothing stops you from giving your best. And the message I'm trying to give here is one, as long as you have given your best. First of all, is there anybody who doesn't believe in God in this room? I mean, like believing Kabisa. So once you believe in God, whichever your religion, and you give your best, your best will always be good enough. Are we together? that your best is always good enough. 
I am happy you are wearing uniform, and I'll tell you why. At my time, we had uh, very good managers. Geoffrey William Griffin, may the good Lord rest his soul in peace. Are there some Starry boys here? Where? Maybe there are none. But, but uh, the point is, I remember Starry Boys Center with a, a lot of uh, nostalgia. And sometimes I am unable to think correctly. Because like Dr. Mwangi has told you, I have been to universities, both as a student and as a vice chancellor, I visited over 500 of them. Are we together? But the trajectory I've had in life was impacted on me between 1967 and 1970. And it was not because, oh, please, please, the, see, that one, you don't go there. If you find a teacher passing, you stand up and stand at attention. There is no choice. If you choose to break the law, your backside is available. <laughs> you get the point. If it is not so heavy, you have to carry 90 buckets of water to water the gardens, it will be done. That is what has molded me and has given me all this energy you are seeing. It's not carrying you like an egg. Oh, this is my only child. Please don't. Uh, yeah. So this is your this is your formative time. So if you if you miss it here, it doesn't matter what you do afterwards. You are not going to, to be any different. And it is not too late to say, well, I have one year to go or two years to go. This is a trajectory I'm going to take. You have to start to believe in yourself. It doesn't matter absolutely which school you go to. It doesn't matter absolutely which family you come from or whether you have parents or not. It doesn't matter. Take it from me. It does not matter. What matters is whether you believe in God and you believe in yourself. And then the other thing I want to talk about is it's important for you to know what you want in life. What is it that you want? Don't be fantastic. Do you get the point? You, I get disappointed when you, you ask all the top children, what do you want to be? I want to be a neurosurgeon. What do you want to be? Is it, is it uh, they are not thinking. What is it that you want to be that you, that is, that you really want to be in life? Who says if, if you're, you have a top grade, you can't be a teacher? Because in my life, I think a teacher is the most important person. I don't know it is why, why you don't say so, but a teacher is perhaps the most important person because he trains everybody. I'm not saying you should be a teacher, but have an open mind which God has given you. In your, in your body, in your mind, what is it that you want to be? Know it early. Don't wait until it is the last minute. Do you get the point? It will help you to concentrate and to do. Of course, you have already escaped the new curriculum. If the new curriculum was there, we will have put you into various trenches, so it will be easier for you. I want to give hope to those children who are orphans or who are poor. How do I look? I look everything you'd want in an old man, isn't it? Because I don't look hungry. Do you get the point? And my background, excuse me, please, go and look at Go and read it. It's in a book for you. Doesn't matter. You need to know where you want to go and move towards where you are going. That's it. Because being Magoha's child will not make him more intelligent than being his cook's child. That is what you should take home. But remember, as uh, young Kenyans of tomorrow, how many people prayed this morning? True confession, I also did. 
Okay, for those who did not pray, I want to give you one word of advice. Please. Did you produce yourself? You did produce yourself. You are assuming that you'll be alive tomorrow. Who has told you you'll be alive tomorrow? Are we together? I'm not a preacher, but if I look at the way I have reached here, I'm not a politician, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a lobbyist. Ask yourself how I have reached where I am now. I think put God first. And if you don't get what you are asking for quickly, don't be in a hurry. It is coming. You will see it. Are we together? And you have to be smart enough to see it. But having said so, I will take those Christians. I'm sure even the Muslims have the same thing. You can't belong to God and another person. Do you get the point? You can't belong to God and another person. Belong to God only. If you want to. And I think you should. And everything will fall in line. Like I said, you don't have to be a surgeon. But if you are an anesthetic technician who works for me at Kenyatta Hospital and you have other businesses where you are doing, you will even be earning more than the surgeon. Do you get the point? Because the theater can't operate when the oxygen flow is not working, the engineer has not fixed everything there, the technicians have not fixed, the nurses are not there. It is a chain. Let me make it a cycle. The weakest point in that cycle is also the strongest point. So those of you who will succeed are those who will enjoy what they are doing. For example, ABCS, isn't it? The date it comes for me to go and teach my subject, which is cancer of the prostate, I will get permission from the president and I will go and give my lecture. That's how it is. That's it. Nothing stops you and he will, he will say yes. Because he's a very reasonable person. Unless it's a matter of life and death. So, if you find that Magoa has five cars and you have started working and you can't afford a car for a year, why are you in a hurry? Ask yourself, these five cars of Magoha, how long did it take him to get them? And whether you see our president, eh? we transport him in comfort. I'm also transported in comfort. You get the point? But if I had a, this three-legged uh, scooter, I would still go where I'm going. Today, for example, if I have to sleep on this floor, I will do so, and I did so when we were marking exams, and people got a shock. I can't leave you, carry on, I'm also here. This is where we have reached, oh, Oh, your excellency, just have another question. I say, thank you very much. If they, they bring me coffee, I say, no, bring the coffee to everybody else, then I will take. Because I'm not special. If you want to, people to do what you are doing, eh? I hope I'm reaching to some of you. I want to talk about leadership and integrity. As is envisaged in uh, the Constitution. Who is a leader? To you, who is a leader? I'm told there are some leaders here. You have some presidents here. Okay. But remember Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin said, no condition is permanent, isn't it? I've already told you about time. So even your presidents are only there for a short time. So all of you are leaders in your own capacity. Do you get the point? You can bring your leadership to another level if you allow it to grow. A leader does not know everything. 
a leader must learn from other people, and most importantly, a leader must lead by example. It must never be a top-down. If it's a top-down, even for the presidents who are here, you will not succeed very much. You have to involve your students. What is it that they want? If they want something wrong, it's your duty to explain to them so that you work as a team, even if it's in a hall. Are we together? And if you have presidents who are saying, okay, Sasa, we pick a bit around the Araka, that one is not a leader. A leader will talk to you very politely, that you, if you are even alone, the one going to say, uh, excuse me, may I just clean your shoes because you are going to inspect the parade. So you need teamwork and team spirit in leadership. Are we together? Top down is never good for you people. We have had people saying Kenya should be like the Tigers. Isn't it? Have you not had so you, you know the Tigers, the, the Asian Tigers? The Asian Tigers, Singapore, and the others. You have heard that South Korea, you have heard that we should have been like them. Why do you think we are not like them? And we are depending now on you to correct the situation. Are we together? There is something called corruption, and that corruption can be corruption of the mind. Your mind can be corrupted. It could be corruption of intent, where you intend to steal something that does not belong to you. For example, I have a purse in my back here. It has a few pounds and uh, shillings. If it was to drop there, how many of you will call me and say, Professor, you have dropped something? If I see many hands, I know you are lying. <laughs> because the, the average Kenyan today, is that not so? So, even that is, and then they will say, What? Mungu amefanya nini? Ati Mungu amesaidi. Apana, ni hiyo ni Satan. Do you get the point? So you, you have a big challenge in this country to walk the straight path where you'll be satisfied with what you have, do what you have to do, be careful about your friends. Because your friend will tell you, want to, you have told him to go and do this, you have told him to go and buy a chair. That's why when I'm given reports like this, I put them behind. I've already told you I go and check. It doesn't matter how high you are. Otherwise, you'll see me going to, uh, to committee. Say, ah, that is the same professor. What was he talking about? Because when you look at the documentation, everything is all right. Now you go to the ground to see what has happened. Now, here. Naangalia. And I will use a practical example for you. We used to go to schools to look for books. This time I went to the bush and found children, every child with a book. But we used to go to schools to look for books. Huh? We have given X amount of money to a school to buy books. So instead of having 500 books, you find how many? You find only four in the library. Where, what has happened to the money for the other one? So positions of responsibility like mine will always come with that temptation. And I think you should say, Setani Ashi, Ashindwe. Have you picked anything from my talk with you, or am I just... Uh, uh, hmm? I want to talk about James Mwangi, and I'll tell you why. I didn't tell him I'll talk about it. 
I, he caught my eye. Originally, I used to think uh, he's just one of the bankers making money. So I, he, did, I, he didn't attract me. But when these wings to fly came, I started keenly to follow. And what I, what I was looking for was whether his level of integrity was high enough. Because you will know. Otherwise, Mwangi perhaps come from Moranga, and in this room, I would have found about 70% children from, from Moranga. That's a typical Kenyan. You can go and check. Do you get the point? So Mwangi is a very strange Kenyan. He didn't know that I was studying him. So I looked and looked and said, uh, he has a way of selecting the poor children of this country. So he has selected the child based on the need of the child, irrespective of where the child is coming from. If you are performing and you are poor, there you go. Everybody is represented here. That's, what, that's why our country has not moved forward. Do you get the point? Because, for example, we have universities, eh, which I also chaper on. And you'll find universities now, if you, if you go to Maseno, <laughs> I don't need to tell you the majority of the people, they'll come from where? If you go to Kanyanyaini, which is my hometown, you'll find the majority also come just from that Kanyanyaini. So that's what we are, we are hoping you will stop. And that's why in my list of heroes, James Mwangi, apart from the fact that he's reasonably wealthy, he has shared that wealth according to what we were taught at Starry Boys Center, which meant that if you, if, you, if you are blessed, remember to give back to the poor according to your means. And he has done so. Because the problem we have in this country now are the children in the gutter. Like I told you, there are children in the gutter. We are trying to bring them out, the intelligent ones, to come out and also go and uplift their areas. And corruption kind of interfered with that. And he, he started correcting it even before the president realized that we could go and correct it at another level. So can you give uh, James Mwangi a good clap? There is no better example that this Wings to Fly initiative of James Mwangi has taken young talents across the world. It shows you that where you come from is not important. My only worry as a physician and a surgeon is that some of you may be having low self-esteem once in a while. That's why I say start your day with a prayer. If you are a Catholic, please say a rosary. It will take you about 20 minutes before you wake up to go to the shower. I think you are allowed to sleep with it. You can't use it to hang yourself. Christ won't allow you, even if you try. Say your rosary every morning. It becomes routine. If you are other people, read your Bible. It becomes part of your life. So you live your life as if today is the last day. In my life, there is no tomorrow. That's why you see me very courageous. Do you get the point? You, don't, you are not afraid of anybody, only God. So you do what you have to do to the best of your ability. And remember to remember the less fortunate children among you. Because if you work, if you walk those lines that I've outlined about integrity, Perhaps I just finalize it with the discipline, the word discipline. Integrity must go hand in hand with discipline. It is, it, it is honorable to be disciplined, isn't it? In medicine, for example, all the people have trained, and there are many, 
many surgeons, many doctors. I can insult them, and there is nothing they can do. That's our law. It is discipline. You see the lawyers in court, how they respect each other according to rank. I am now starting to see a trend where you don't respect each other. There's no harm. Discipline is opposite bullying. Eh? There's no harm in giving respect to the person who is senior, as long as he deserves the respect. Do you get the point? Because I see the way some people uh, treat the form ones. I say, which, where did these children come from? Are they children of animals or human beings? So there is honor in being disciplined. So when your parents uh, get you, especially when you are a lady at this age, you should thank them and be very happy that they are protecting you from all the hyenas outside. Are you listening? And for the guys, because during my time, we used to have boogies eh? with big bell bottoms. And they used to come once a week between 2 and 4 o'clock at the social halls. So me, I used to go at the one which was at Jericho. And you get full permission, and you must be back in the house by? By four. The difference of parents then and now is that the current parent has no time. Even when you come back to the house, you find there is nobody. So you go back outside and do whatever you want. So try not to do what your parents are doing if they are doing the wrong thing. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. And for those of you who are coming from an area where they are going to say you should uh, get married, please run very quietly and come to any of my officers across the nation and we shall protect you. Because even the human body, the way God has made it, it was not made to start producing children at 12 of 13, 9, 8, uh, 10, 12 of 13, you end up with something called a fistula, which is very disgusting. I could talk again and again and again, but I would like to thank uh, Equity Foundation along with James uh, Mwangi for having found me worthy to come and talk to you. Uh, my journey has been that of believing in myself even now. But let me tell you a few stories back so that I, I go and sit down. I became a chairman of an academic department of surgery by default because I was made acting by default. The person who was made was not ready to. After one year, because of the way I was doing things, the way I was trained at Tare, uh, I was made a full chairman. Then after that, they told me, uh, we want you to become the dean of this, uh, the faculty of medicine. I said, no, not me. I'm not going to ask or beg any of you for, for your votes. Do you get the point? He said, but no, just be there. We don't have to campaign. We, we are the ones who want you, and we know why we want you. I told them, but I have a tendency to be a bit dictatorial. He said, that, that's what we want. So I went to that office. I was elected without any opposition. That's God working. The Holy Spirit is working for me. Do you understand? Then I went to the office, and the office was a pigsty, in real sense. It was a dean's office. In order to enter, you had to go around. There were papers all over the place. I went to the VC, who was the headmaster of the university, and said, see, as dean of medicine, I, as Magoa, son of Magoa, I'm not going to sit there. Can you give me money to go and get it to my standards? That is believing in myself without being selfish. He said, we see my son, there's no money. I said, no, but the money is out there. You just need to go for it. He said, oh, if that is the case, I've given you permission to go for it. Guess what? Huh? I think in two weeks, I got 10 million shillings from my colleagues in South Korea. 
So I rushed back to him and said, I'm ready, sir, to... Then I got very annoyed with him. He said, you know, you can't do the dean's office before you do the principal's office. So I asked him, but why did you not tell me this before? Then he says, but I was very sure you are not going to get the money, that's why. You, do you see what I'm telling you? So I now had to go back. It took me another six weeks to get another 20 million. But we were able to do the dean's office and the principal's office. That's in the year 2000. If you have time to go to the University of Nairobi Medical School, you will see it's like it was done yesterday. The quality of work was done yesterday. If we did it the Kenyan style, we should have changed the furniture by now about five times. Are you, I, 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 <laughs> then, then after that, everything happened very quickly. I became the principal. I was dean only for one year, principal only for one year. Then I was taken to main campus where I, I was a deputy vice chancellor for another two and a half years. And the rest is history. And that, that luck, or whatever you call it, has continued until now. This must be the last one because I am not a politician. The others, ili imibaki, ni ili watu ingine. Do you get the point? So believe in your God and believe in yourself. And if somebody wants to copy you, tell him, I'm sorry, I'm the one you should copy. That's it. Be proud of yourself. If you eat fillet steak at home with chapati, and I eat uh, sukumawiki and fried with ugali, you think I'll not sleep? Biologically, I'll even be better in terms of uh, the peristalsis of the, of the food going down. So believe in yourselves. How many of you are orphans here before I sit down? Okay. You should not lose any hope because it's like your own father, you are your own mother, and you have a father in James Wangi. Because uh, even almost 20 years after Griffin's death, we still refer to him as our own father. Because what he taught us has carried us through life. You are actually going through the university of life right now. This is the university of life right now. What is going to follow after this may not be important. So if you are not molded at this level, but you have confidence in yourself, that's fine. And be also ready to learn from somebody. Not by looking at what he's doing. Who has told you he's the right one? Once the things have been marked and you find yours is not correct and you know uh, why Dera has the correct method, go and learn from her. It is good and blessed to learn. I say, ah, this one I don't understand. How is it? Even if it takes 10 times. Senor. 